Hi there, my third through sixth grade artists. I'm excited for today's art lesson, but first, it's so cool that there's gonna be an online book fair. I'm really excited about that. I know Mrs. Mead just talked to you about that in her video, um, and it looks like there's a lot of really cool books to get. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan myself, and I think I saw there's a new illustrated version of Harry Potter that I might try and get at the book fair, so I hope you check that out. All right, so for today's art lesson, we are going to be thinking about color and it's also it's autumn it's fall the season and the leaves are starting to change color so today we're going to draw a tree we're going to use lines to draw it and then you're going to have fun with color and be creative to come up with your own color scheme so we're going to learn today and review warm and cool colors before we get started i want to make sure you all have your supplies out so you should each have a piece of white drawing paper that I provided. We're going to hold it the tall way. Also today, we're going to use our markers and we're going to use the black Crayola marker to draw the tree. So I'm actually not going to draw it in pencil. I'm going to draw it right in the black marker. And when I start drawing it on the video, you start drawing too. draw right along with me in marker. Cause the nice thing about a tree, if you make a mistake, you can just kind of like work it in. Um, in addition to your white paper, and your black marker. We're also going to use your oil pastels. This is what I use to add all the colors in the leaves. I did use marker at the bottom just because it's such a big space, the land, and I didn't want to waste my oil pastels to do that part. So once you have your paper, your marker, your oil pastels out, you're ready to go. And again, if for any reason you don't have your backpack art kit today, Use whatever you have available. Maybe you have a black crayon in your pencil box or a black colored pencil. Or hey, if you don't have either, use a regular pencil and have fun, everyone. Here's the color wheel. The colors go in order like the rainbow from red all the way to purple. Some colors are warm colors while some are cool. Your warm colors are reds, orange, yellow, and pink, which is a lighter version of red. Oftentimes people think of a fire or a sunset. Warm colors are often around during the fall when the leaves turn from green to beautiful reds, oranges, and yellows. And these colors can make us feel certain ways when we see an artwork. Sometimes they're really energetic and lively. Cool colors are greens, blues, and purples and they have a different feeling in artwork. Here's a portrait by the artist Vincent Van Gogh, and all the blues in the painting make it feel a certain way. Similarly, here's his famous painting, Starry Night, and all the blue, again, gives it a certain feeling. Here's a famous print by the artist Hukasai, a Japanese artist, and again, the blue makes it feel a certain way. And lastly, here's a painting by Ramiro Brito full of warm and cool colors that really has a happy feeling. So my third through sixth grade artist, today as you create your tree, think about color. Think about how the color in your artwork will make someone feel when they look at it. You could use mainly warm colors or mainly cool colors, or you could use a little bit of both. So let's get started. All right, my artist. So I took my black marker out of my Crayola marker pack and I'm starting by drawing two straight lines down for the trunk of my tree. I started about in the middle of the page and went down from there. So from those two straight lines I made down, I made a diagonal line out to each side of my paper all the way to the edge. Now I'm just adding another diagonal line inside. It's kind of like a letter V there in the inside. And the whole thing looks like a letter Y. This is a good place to pause the video for a moment and everyone get caught up. All right, if you've unpaused the video, now we're gonna make two more tall branches. So I've started one here, kind of in the middle. And now I'm gonna make another one. First one line, then a second line. And I'm going back to that first branch because I actually want to make it go all the way to the top of the paper. So there I have it. I have four big branches to start the tree. And now I'm just going to take my Crayola marker and color it in. 
So you can go ahead and keep drawing your branches if you're still drawing them. And then when you're ready, you can start coloring in your tree as well. You'll see I um, make nice long strokes with my marker. I find that's a quicker way to color in. Or you can kind of do it, you know, with shorter strokes, whatever is be works best for you. So this is going to be a black tree. And again, I'm using my Crayola marker, not my Sharpie, because the markers has a broader tip so I can color quicker. If I did it with the Sharpie, it'd take a long time. But use whatever you have. If for some reason you don't have your markers, use a Sharpie, use a black crayon, use a black colored pencil, whatever you have available. So just keep on coloring in so you have your trunk and your four main branches colored in black. So these are probably your four biggest branches. And they go all the way to the edge of the paper, two to the sides, two to the top. Yours doesn't have to look just like mine. No two trees are the same. Okay, now we're gonna start to add more branches. And branches, can come off of other branches and they start to get thinner. So I'm gonna pick one of my branches and I'm gonna draw one line to make a branch. And I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker where it attaches to the main branch. I added another branch to my second one. Maybe you could add some even thinner or smaller ones with more lines. It's really all about using lines. And you can see as I do mine that not all my lines are the same. Some are wavy. So right now, just watch Miss Voss for a second draw. Um, don't draw with me. Just watch. See how I'm making more branches by just adding more lines. So I can make a branch come off a branch. And then I can make another branch come off of that branch. And the further away it is from the trunk of the tree, it gets thinner. So when I want to branch like a medium thickness, I make two lines and color it in in the middle. If I'm making a really tiny thin branch, I just use one line. And we're trying to make a lot of shapes here using a lot of branches because then you'll have a lot of different shapes that you can add color to. So you want to make a lot of branches all the way to the edge of your paper so that you have a lot of different shapes. So why don't you go ahead now, my artists, and you can keep adding branches to yours while I'm adding branches to mine. Yours don't have to be in the same place or anything. Just use lines to keep adding branches to your tree. And remember, the further away they get from the trunk, they're gonna start to get thinner. You can make your branches hit other branches. Your branches can go all the way to the edge. It's really up to you. So just keep on adding branches so you have a lot of different shapes to color in. Look at your tree and see if you have any really big white spaces still and think about adding a branch there to make another shape. And this tree is almost a little abstracted, meaning it doesn't look exactly realistic. Once you are done drawing your tree, and again, take your time, but when you're done, you've given it a good look, and you think you have enough shapes, make sure to put your cap back on your Crayola marker if that's what you're using, 
and put it back in your marker box. I'm just adding a few more branches here and a few more branches there. All right, now for my tree, I am going to draw in underneath the land. So I'm making a kind of like a curved line like a hill, and I stopped when I hit my tree and came out the other side. So I did it a little bit below the bottom branch of my tree because I want to show some sky. Now I'm just making a few curved lines so it's like there's rolling hills. This tree is in a big field and there's rolling hills behind it. I did three curved lines. And at this point, this might be a good point to flip over your artwork and write your first and last name and your grade on the back. Once you've done that, it is time for color artists and you can start to really think about what colors you're gonna use in your tree. We're gonna use our oil pastels as long as you have them. If you don't, for whatever reason, use whatever you have available in your pencil box. I'm gonna use warm colors to start off my tree. And the fun thing about the oil pastels is you can blend your colors. So I'm taking out the red, orange, yellow, and pink. And if your pastel happened to break apart at all, like mine did, notice I keep both pieces in my box and just line them up. Also, artists, if you need to rip down the paper a little bit on your oil pastel, go right ahead. I try not to rip all the paper off because it does protect the pastel and help hold it together. But of course, you may need to rip some down as you work. So I'm starting off with some yellow and I'm coloring in this big shape here. And then a cool thing, I'm gonna use the orange and I'm gonna blend them. And how I blend them is by overlapping. So I am taking that orange and coloring a little over the yellow. And now I'm taking the yellow and coloring a little over the orange. And it gives it this really cool blended effect. So that's something you can explore today as you're coloring these different shapes in. All right, so I'm gonna go to another shape and this one I'm gonna do red. And you don't have to do the same colors as me right now, artists. You can do any colors you want. If you need a paper towel, you can get one in your classroom and um, wipe off your oil pastels by twisting them in the paper towel if they're dirty at all, the tops of them. Here I'm gonna blend red and pink. Again, they're both warm colors, so they blend together really well. They're next to each other in the rainbow in the color wheel, so I'm overlapping that pink over the red. Some shapes I might do a solid color. It's really up to you. You can jump around. You don't have to do all the shapes right next to each other at once. Just really have fun with it. Explore color and blending. And this might take you um, most of class. So if you don't finish your tree today, that's okay. You can always take it home and work on it more at home. So here I'm going to blend some yellow and orange again. And again, it's by overlapping it. So go ahead, artists, you can take out your pastels and work on your color choices. You do whatever colors you enjoy. I'm gonna speed up my own video here. It did take me a while to color this. It will definitely take you till the end of class. And again, you might not finish and that's fine. Um, I used oil pastel for all of the shapes in between my branches, kind of like where the leaves would be on a tree. For underneath the tree, though, I did a little bit of oil pastel for the sky, but um, the rest of the bottom I used marker because it's so much land at the bottom. I didn't want to like um, waste all my oil pastel and run out of pastel by using it all up just to color the hills different colors. So you could use markers, crayons, something that won't take you too long to color the hills at the bottom. And again, have fun with it. Enjoy everyone. And you can take it home today.
and maybe uh, the aide or teacher in the room can pause the video when mine's fully colored so it can be an example to the students working in the class. And again, have fun with it today, everyone.